This is the Trossachs in Stirlingshire. And, and uh, this little road I'm on is, is like a transverse glen that connects two larger glens. And, and essentially that's what Trossachs means, but the name Trossachs has been um, taken to, you know, include a, a, a wide, wide area as in Loch Lomond in Trossachs National Park. But um, I'm heading up in, into the Trossachs through this little glen to Loch Catherine, um, where I'm going to go for a bike ride and I'm going to call on the help of none other than Sir Walter Scott. Well, that's me packed up for the night. The, the steamship company here at Loch Catron have a number of uh, motorhome bays, so you can you know stay overnight here. Um, they've got bays with electric hookup, uh, others toilets, and and fresh water. Um, I'm pretty self-contained, so I've just um, you know packed up uh, for the night without any hookup or anything and uh, that cost me £10, £10 a night, so it's a fantastic location. It's busy just now, but you know, come six o'clock tonight, it'll be pretty quiet. And, um, and it's quite handy for the first leg of my little trip today. I've been coming here to the Trossachs since as a, a young man, a, a wee boy really. And in those days, the place excited me and inspired me, as it still does, with its, uh, with its blend of history and legend and folklore and natural beauty. And it's really no small wonder that, you know, artists and, and, and poets and writers have been coming here and extolling the beauties of the place ever since. And of course, the Sir Walter Scott I referred to earlier is the steamship and not the writer. I'm taking the boat up Loch Catherine to Stronachlacher, and from there I'll cycle down the north shore of the loch back to the Trossachs Pier. And what a journey this is! Sir Walter Scott once wrote, So wondrous wild the whole might seem, the scenery of a fairy dream. 
birch, oak, ash and pine decorate the shores and here and there grey upthrusts of rock burst from the green foliage like, like ancient craggy sentinels. Sir Walter Scott's epic poems Rob Roy and Lady of the Lake brought the early tourists here to this wild region. Only 20 odd miles from Glasgow but a different world entirely. A land of mountains, secret quarries, rocky bluffs and deep wooded ravines. The steamship was built in 1899 in Dumbarton and has plied its trade here in Loch Catron ever since. The original three-cylinder steam plant remains in operation with a pump that draws feed water from the loch for the boilers. Now in 2008 the engines were converted from coal power to biodiesel. There are two other ferries on Loch Catron, but the Sir Walter Scott runs daily to Stornachlacher and back again. I'll put all the details down below. In the early years, passengers could disembark from the ferry here at Stornachlacher to be met by horse-drawn coaches to take them to the hotel at Inversnaid in Loch Lomond side. Today, cyclists like myself can get off the ferry and cycle back to the Trossachs, experiencing another aspect of this wonderful, historic Loch Catherine. I'm on my own now, and uh, 14 miles lies between here and back to the Trossachs Pier, so 14 miles on the bike, and I'm looking forward to it. The western end of Loch Catron is historically linked to the Clan MacGregor and its erstwhile chief Rob Roy MacGregor. But even before Rob Roy was born, the clan was infamous. This is Glen Gyle, where Rob Roy MacGregor was uh, reputedly born. I say reputedly born because he was actually probably born uh, in a little stone turf roofed cottage round about here. Following a bloody battle against the Cahoons in Glenthroon, King James of Scotland decreed the Clan MacGregor should be proscribed. No one could use the name upon pain of death. In the years that followed, clan members were scattered wide, living outside the law, homeless, plundering and reaving. It became known as the Children of the Mist.
But some smarter McGregors use their notoriety to advantage. Some of them set up a protection racket, protecting the cattle of rich lords and merchants for an annual fee. These schemes became known as the Watches, which were later turned into armed forces, hence the, the likes of the Black Watch Regiment. Rob Roy's father became joint captain of the Highland Watch, an honour which fell to the young Rob when his father died in 1693. Many of the tales of Rob Roy McGregor and his fame was guaranteed after Daniel Defoe wrote a book about him, and Sir Walter Scott gave him sufficient colour in his epic poem that he became something of a Scots Robin Hood. I thought I'd just stop for a few moments and kind of reminisce, if you, if you like. Um, it's just so beautiful today, and there's lots and lots of boyhood memories coming flooding back. We used to come up here as, as young teenagers, we'd borrow the kind of elementary camping gear, and uh, we told our parents we'd joined the scouts and we're going to a, a sort of proper scout camp where there'd be adults to supervise and things. Um, it, was a, it was a white lie. Um, basically we came, we roamed, roamed the hills and put our tent up where we wanted and slept where we wanted. And, uh, it was just, it was wonderful. And uh, away behind me, away behind me here uh, is Ben Lomond. One of the first Munros that I climbed. In fact, I think it was the first Munro I climbed very close to Glasgow. In fact, we're only 26 miles from Glasgow here and Loch Catrin behind me here, um, for as long as I can remember, has supplied the good citizens of Glasgow with their, their water supply. Uh, yeah, even today, uh, water still goes down a whole series of, of, of tunnels and reservoirs and whatnot, 26 miles from here to the city of Glasgow. So it's just wonderful to be here. Uh, and you know, it's just tempting to say that, you know, things change over the years, but today the Trossachs are as beautiful as I can remember. Uh, just absolutely wonderful. I pointed out Ben Lowen behind me, um, a way over, um, Oh, a way through there is the, the, the hills of the, the Aracher Alps, another area that we used to kind of wander and, and enjoy exploring. So there we are. I've got probably about five or six miles to cycle back to Loch Catron, and then I think I'm going to be ready for a good meal. Mm, I wonder what we'll have tonight. Well, what a great day. A great sail up Loch Catron and a, a smash a 40 mile or so bike ride back to the camper. Whew. Well, I think what I'm going to do now, and I think I deserve, I think I deserve a wee rest now. So I might, I might have a, a 40 minute nap or something and then start cooking something for dinner. Hmm. I'm going to try something just a little bit different tonight, something warming and, and su substantial with maybe just a hint of health. It's mac cheese, but a slightly different recipe from normal. 
Now, I've actually pinched this recipe from my uh, favourite Volkswagen magazine, VW Bus, and I hope they don't mind me trying it out here. It's a great magazine, by the way, and uh, I heartily recommend it to you if you're a, a VW camper van owner like myself. So, for tonight, here we go. I've got macaroni, and I'll use about 200 grams of that. And here's what makes this recipe just a bit different. Evaporated milk. So that'll be quite interesting. I'll use about 200 grams of that as well. Now I've got a small packet of chorizo bits just to kind of, you know, meet it up a wee bit. If you're a, a vegetarian, then just miss this out. And finally, it wouldn't be mac cheese without a good dose of grated cheese. And this is good old mature cheddar. Okay, boil up the macaroni until it's just on the on the firm side of al dente. As you can see, I'm using my good old ridge monkey here, but you can do this in a frying pan or even an ordinary pot if you don't have a, a ridge monkey. Add the evaporated milk, making sure you leave some for your coffee later. Add the cheese and chorizo. And give it all a right good mix. Now, by this time, the macaroni will be soaking up the milk and becoming deliciously gooey. Keep your gas on a pretty low flame as you mix and melt. Um, you don't really want to, to burn it if, if you can help it. Then, I like to close over the Ridge Monkey and just simmer gently for about five minutes or so. Time to plate it up. And you should have enough mac cheese for a, for a couple of people. And since I'm on my own, I think I might have seconds. <laughs> and he's me in a diet too. Don't tell the wife. Okay, just to appease my guilt a wee bit, I'll attempt to make it a, a tad healthier by adding some fresh salad. And of course, salad doesn't taste the same without some salad dressing. This is a, a locale stuff, apparently. So here we go. Doesn't look too bad, does it? A bit of, bit of salad to make it, um, well, pretend it's a bit healthier. <laughs> um, so here we go. Um, chorizo and mac cheese. Mm. That's good. A nice, simple meal at the end of a, a kind of long day. Cheers. I'm going to enjoy this. Could save you sitting watching me. Filling my face with food. Um, I will maybe call it a day there. As usual, if you've enjoyed this video, if you get something from it, please um, think about subscribing. Press that subscribe button and um, if, if you liked the video if you could press the, the like button it does really make a, a big big difference and helps us an awful lot and uh, you know press that little bell get you know notify the little bell and we'll let you know every time there's a new video um, coming on board so um, I'm going to enjoy my mac cheese with chorizo um, probably get the head down early tonight and we'll catch up with you next time so stay safe Enjoy your camper van and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.